at hey guys welcome back to my channel welcome back to friday knits um just a little bit something different today i have to actually go and get my car registered or transferred into my name because i just got a brand new car um and yeah you know my neighbor just saw me and she's probably thinking why am i talking why is she talking to herself who knows i know you can do it online but um uh there's a reason for it not because the other guy is not registered online so i can only transfer it online if the other guy is also registered online which is not so now i've got to go into a classic roads oh oh god my other camera just dropped i thought i could have a whole setup in here i cannot this car is so good i've got to put the window down a bit God, it's a rolling window guys it's not an electric window it's a fucking rolling window i'm just gonna talk about my car a little bit i kind of wanted to get the cheapest car possible just because i really just want something to run around in um i wanted something that was really easy to um go places so i can go and buy a yard or go to a yard market sort of deal um yeah so my husband's a mechanic so we just decided to get a little car that we had seen and it's a little Mazda 121 bubble. Oh, uh, I'm going up a hill. It has no guts up a hill. There we go. <laughs> um, I'm so used to our other car, which is like a sports car, coupe thing. Um, but yeah, when we got this car, it had been sitting under a tree for like years, six or seven years or something. And then when we got it from the guy, we bought it off the guy, it wasn't running, which is fine, um, but it did turn out that it needed a new engine, so it was actually a much bigger job than we expected, because it's older, the, it, it wasn't that expensive, but the labour was just a bit annoying, um, and then we had to uh, get actually a smaller engine like, so this was like a 1.5 and now it's a 1.3 and on top of that I'm sorry if this is shaking so much it's just on a thing um, on top of that it's also an automatic car which I just don't love if you hear like a little buzzing sound it's something in the dash as well it's not quite fixed um, but yeah just the joys of having a car like this a eh? I'm so used to a manual, I keep sort of like, there are a few things, we did put like a sound system in, it did have its own, it did have like the original radio, which had like a tape deck, which I was like, yeah, but um, it, it didn't work, because back then, in order to get it to work, you had to have a code or something. Alright, so some of you guys sent in questions um, for an AMA, I am going to do like an unpopular opinion as well but um, I wanted to think of a few unpopular opinions first before I did them because I don't think I really have many I think a lot of things don't bother me but maybe um, I'll think of some okay so the first question is my favorite stitch I don't know if I really have a favorite stitch I think if I had to choose it's just stopping that stitch I think um, just the knit stitches look really cool and pearl stitches can look cool and I think there's so much you can do with it and I definitely think like you know you can always get fancy stitches and stuff but just classic old stockinette stitch is good um I do like oh, oh everyone's everywhere here I do also like um I've been looking at a like a summery stitch uh like it's called feather and fan or like old shale um the stitches and it has like these really cute sort of little feathery and fanny things on it so there's that um oh no lie there's like a drive-in starbucks which i'm going to go to oh first drive-in starbucks for my little buddy my little bubbles bubbles i'm trying to think of um a pair of license plates to name my car so I actually want to name my car something like from a game 
um, there's this game I play called League of Legends, and in it there's a character, his name's Teemo, and you get skins, and then the skins are named, and the um, skin name is... Oh, there's a guy right there. Um, the skin name is Beemo, and so I was like, I want to get... I want to get call it Beemo and then like paint my car yellow and black. Call my car Beemo, but of course someone's taking it. Hi, um, can I have a tall ice white mocha, please? Tall ice white mocha? Yeah. Whipped cream on top? No, thank you. Anything else for you? No, just that. 590, thank you. Great, thank you. So now I'm thinking of other names. I'm like, maybe I should call it like just a bubbles because it's a bubble one, two, one. Something one, two, one. I was thinking like bub one two one, but then I didn't want people thinking it was like a baby, which is a bit weird. Bubbles, bubble, bub. Ooh. Next. Oh, uh, you know what? Um, I just realised I got no cup holders in here because it's so old. All I got in my car are ashtrays. Literally ashtrays. What if I can use the ash? Yeah, you know, I'll, I'll ask him. I'll ask him for a for a cup holder. Eh? What's in my ashtray already? A receipt. It begins. I start storing receipts. So good to go back to the normal question. My favourite stitch is probably stockinette stitch. Um, or whatever stitch I happen to be working on because I just feel like you can always learn. You're always learning new stitches. You're always learning new things. So, um, yeah. So the next question I had was what are my favourite colour combinations for knitting? I'm honestly not that great with colour. Um, I'm not as like clever with colour so um, probably my favourite colour would be anything with white. So you can have like a normal bob colour like navy with like a white trimming um, or you can mix like a, a rib with white and a colour like a hand dyed yarn. I think hand-dyed yarns go really well with just plain white or natural or cream or whatever you want to call it. Um, yeah. Or just like whatever that color is. No, it's just a card, please. Yeah. Great. Um, where are we going to get to grab a tray? A little tray? A little tray. Yeah. Perfect. I just have no cup holders in this oh, car. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Ah, she liked my little joke. I, mean, I think she looked at my car and she's like, yeah, you got no cup holders. But you, why, but why the new sound system? Um, I, I do look at, um, what is that, Pantone colour of the month thing as well. And I think they can have really great colours as well. Yeah, whatever those mixes are. Like, you know, like pink and green, like a forest green are always a good combination. I think that's better. Uh. So my next question is... Um, so it's not really a question. Someone said thanks for recommending Revenge, which is like no problem. That show is just the wildest thing in the world. It is. It's great, and it, it's because I love Emily Van Camp, who's gone on to be in like Captain America. She played Sharon Tate. I love that sort of soapy sort of stuff, and I think that sort of stuff's coming back in fashion, if you will. Like Bridgerton's really soapy and campy, and that show You is really so, which reminds me, I'm gonna watch that tonight. I'm gonna watch You. Uh, I recently, I think I said in my other video, I recently finished A Discovery of Witches, which was end up being good. Um, I love the actors in it, and the production of it was great. And the, yeah, um, and I also right now I'm watching Once Upon a Time, which is also very soapy, very campy. Um, yeah, no worries for the recommendations. I. I watch a lot of trash, like I love, I love shows like The Vampire Diaries and anything on the CW network, I really do. I did watch like those DC shows for a while where they all crossed over and everyone was in each other's shows, but after a while it was just a bit, I don't know, like The Flash, I gave up on season five, just started getting a bit weird, didn't it? I'm like, hmm. Um, the next question is knitting related and it is how many whips do I currently have? I have about five whips um, and they only one of them is like a personal knit and the rest are designs. Um, two of them are like samples I'm making for, oh there's a car up behind me. Two of them are samples I'm currently making for a my current design, my sweetheart revenge 
dress and um, what else? I'm making a hat that I want to make as a tutorial. Oh, I think this is what I wanted. Is this where I want to be? And, you know, it kind of looks like it. It looks like a government building. Oh, I probably should have looked this up online. No, that's just the community hub. All right, thank God. Yeah, so a hat I'm doing that I want to do a tutorial for you guys, but again, it's just the um, the knitting pain I was talking about in my last video. It's just ugh, pain in my butt. Okay, I actually think I need to look up where I need to go. Yeah, I better. I'm sure it's close. It's like follow. It's a to go down this road and then I'll eventually turn up there. When I first got my license, I had no idea where I was going, but I'm going to say it was before the time of GPS. It's going to give away my age. Um, and the car I drove my, was my parents' car, which was also a Mazda, which is probably why I'm used to Mazdas. And it was, theirs was like a Mazda 323. And this is obviously a 121. And um, yeah, I'm going to pull over. I used to just drive around and you had to really whip out the, a Melway. And this is giving my age away now. Melway is just like a, I don't know, in Sydney, it'd be like a Sidway. I don't know where it, it's just a map, a, map, a book maps and then some roads just weren't complete on it but now it's all gps and stuff so i am going to look up where i need to go now all right yeah i'm not that far it's like down the end of this freaking road isn't it i was right i was right in my head um the next question is uh best way to join yarn the best way to join yarn is uh, not any way that I do it because I'm really bad at joining yarn. You can see the gaps, you can see like a lot of my pieces. I I do this thing where I will sort of join them um, going around like I will loop one around and loop another around. I, I don't even know. I, I, I don't know. I'm so sorry. I can't answer this question for you. Um, I will send, I, I have links that I've saved on my Instagram, so maybe I'll um, link them down below in my description for you guys, so you can have a look there, and that's the best way. Uh, next question is, what is my opinion with knitting with 100% cotton? It is, I have no hard feelings for or against it. Um, I think the cottons can be quiet depending how they're made. Some can be rough on your hands, some can be soft in your hands. I know Wunda Gang and We Are Knitters have very, very soft cotton yarn. Um, I, I don't mind it. Um, if the question is in terms of... Um, Hey, so I'm just currently editing the video and I realized I never finished my thought here. So um, I think I was thinking like if the question was in terms of like how cotton is made, like it uses a lot of water, so it's not really sustainable and it could be considered like worse than using animal fibers. Um, then I don't know, there's a lot of issues within the industry itself and there's a lot of issues that need to be worked on. Um, but I think affordability is important to a lot of people. So I don't want to judge anyone by what they can afford and what they choose to use. Yeah, it's really difficult just because there's not a lot of hard and fast rules around fashion. So yeah, that's, that's my answer to that. Well, that is done. That took like five minutes and I was expecting to wait there at least a good 20 to 30 minutes or something i brought my knitting i was like gonna sit there and knit and i parked in like a half hour spot and i'm like yeah i'm definitely gonna get fined but uh i didn't so hmm. now i'm just gonna sit here and let my car warm up a bit because it's one of those cars that sometimes needs to warm up like it did in the 90s you gotta sit and wait a bit all right um would i ever move out of australia hells yes uh, it's actually like one of my things to like, please don't be here, um, to live overseas. I've always wanted to live overseas. Um, absolute goals. Wow, the traffic in this parking lot just cleared. Front of the line. Front of the line. I'm pretty sure I turned right here. Yeah, I do want to move out of Australia. It is 
like I want to live overseas for like six months to a year. Um, it's always been one of my goals, and I I feel like with the job I sort of have now, I might be able to. Yeah, I don't know. It's just the whole logistics of it. Um, plus, we do have a dog, and I don't know. There's, there's a lot of moving parts to it. But it is definitely like one of my things I've always wanted to do and um, yeah, London would be my first option to move to. Um, the only thing that I can foresee that could be a problem is other than the huge cost of living is the, um, the weather. I just, I actually do love an Australian summer, I love Australian weather, I love the sun. Um, and weather really affects my mood, it affects how I feel, so I think that would be a big thing, but also having been there for a couple of weeks last year, I really did love it. I loved, um, I loved living in the city, um, yeah, so definitely, it is, it is a bucket list thing to tick off for me. Alright, I'm going to continue this at home because I want to listen to my radio a bit and try it out because it got installed like yesterday so I want to give it a shot and see how it goes. Okay, this is how old the car is that if I lock it and then just push it closed, it pops back open. And it's one of those doors you gotta, if anyone remembers this, you gotta hold it up in order to lock it. That's how old this car is but I love the little dude he's so cute she's so cute that's my little car right now with all my stuff on here hey pretty girl oh it's so pretty hello <laughs> good girl okay so I've just got my laptop here. I think I've got a few emails I need to go through. This was the knitting that I brought to um, to Vic Roads to do, but alas, didn't need to use it in and out in five minutes, which is just a record. I must have just looked like I needed to get my stuff done and get out. Maybe she knew I parked in a half hour spot. I did put up a story about how much insurance I'll have to pay per year and like you guys saw it's an old car there's no airbags there's no cup holders it's not electric mirrors there's no central locking and on top of that I have a really great history because I haven't really had to claim anything before um, and on top of that my husband has a good history as well with the insurance company so I think all a combination of all those things combined <laughs> gave me that um, that value but also the market value of the car is so low it's about not even I think the highest I could go was 2800 um, agreed value but it's perfect for what I need I if I it fits a lot of yarn I haven't tried it yet but I think it will feel a lot of yarn it's got a boot I like that it's a four door with a boot and it's still very small it's really cute and once I'm done pimping it Okay, so what knits are you planning for winter? So I have no plans for winter. I've actually got more summer designs coming, if anything. I do want to make like sweaters, like with a bit of this intaja thing going on. I imagined this really complicated um, sort of design on my sweater that's inspired by like a cross stitch pattern I saw. And yeah, I don't know. I do want to work with more color. I um, I do have plans for it. I've sort of drawn it out, half drawn it out, but no, no definitive plans. I've got, after this design, I've got more summer designs coming. So, yeah. Clean this. Uh, next one is, how did you turn your hobby into a business? That is a really good question. I honestly just did it. I did it during COVID. I think, say with everyone else, we all sort of just collectively had to do something so that we didn't go crazy and um before this i hadn't been working really i had really only been working in retail and i didn't really have career goals in terms of like something to like like a like a job that is a steady job and by that it's not like i wanted to be a lawyer and so you work at a law firm or something um i wanted to be an actor 
or I want to be an actor I should say and so that's just a very on and off thing and yeah I before this I worked retail and it just wasn't for me like I was getting so sick of it I was getting really yeah it just wasn't working so I think the whole idea of workplace and that we have to commute we have to do all these things is just ridiculous I always thought it I always never liked the construct of it and I I you know I hope there is some sort of huge reform with it but yeah turning my business into a hobby it was just it was the only thing I was doing I was very lucky um, that um, I had someone else to support me for for that time and I I honestly just did it I'm the kind of person though that sort of jumps into things that goes into things and fails as I go um, and I, I do overthink things as well and it's just all learning on the job and you'll eventually get to where you need to get to I've been doing this for a couple of years now like two years or something and I've not really had a plan I just sort of went I think I'll make a YouTube channel that'll make some money and maybe I'll um, sell my patterns and then I'll make some money and I just sort of did it without thinking and over time I've improved so if you sort of look at my patterns that I've released in order over time I've just started kept trying to improve it improve it improve it a bit more um, and I'm still learning now so it's just a matter of jumping in and doing it and not expecting perfection right away that's the best advice I can give to you what is your most favorite pattern and what has been your most difficult pattern to design to date? I don't know if I have a favorite. I think the favorite is always the next one coming. It's the next pattern that I'm going to work on and I'm like, I really like this pattern. I really like this pattern. Um, I, don't, I don't know if I have a favorite. I can't have favorites, can I? I try to like what I make or everything I make. Probably the ones I haven't released. There's one I made like a year or two ago. I still haven't released and it was quite difficult. I made up this like really cool um raglan sort of design on it and it looked really cool yeah i don't know maybe that one mm. uh very fitting question what is your favorite car it's my car right now are you able to make a living from your knitting youtube and patterns at the moment yes i have only really started looking properly at my finances in the last couple of months and um, it fluctuates. It's fluctuated quite a bit. I'm making like enough money that I'm quite happy with it. I would obviously love to scale up way more and I just think that even if I did go out and get a job I would still be doing this and still be trying like build it up still very very slowly but um, I'm very lucky. I'm very lucky I get to do this. Quite happy with what I'm making here now. Yeah. Uh, what is your inspiration when you knit new designs? Uh, it is honestly anywhere so I could be on Pinterest and I could see something that I like and I'm like cool I'm gonna make something like that and I'll save it in a folder it could be going out um, like at the shops I like to see what's like trending and what's happening and then sort of take inspiration and knit that um, what else my next designs are inspired by things I saw on TV shows so I watch some dirty reality shows like Married at First Sight, maths and stuff. And sometimes the contestants wear these really great pieces of clothing and I'm like, that's really cool. I'm going to copy that and knit it and I'll save it and put it away. And then um, I'll think about it for a while. I'll always like sit with it for a while and then think about how I want to make it. So yeah anywhere really like you can get inspiration from anywhere I know there are some designers who get inspiration from like other things like architecture and um places and all that and I I do as well but not as like not as 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 much as them um some get inspired by colors textures I I get inspired by that as well anywhere really anything anything anywhere everywhere all at once uh, okay, what is the most annoying knitting project you had and why? The most annoying knitting project I had. The most annoying knitting project I've had. I can't think of it now. I just don't think I remember projects that I specifically hate. Actually, I think it was when I was trying to knit a, um, what was I knitting? Uh, like a sweater for my husband and I just, I don't know why, I just couldn't. 
just couldn't do it. I think I was trying to adjust numbers or something and I'm like, this isn't making sense and it got me really angry and I just gave up on it. And now I've unraveled the yarn. But then I also learned about the sweater curse or something like that. So I guess it's a good thing I didn't do it. But um, depends on how you look at it because my boyfriend would be so disappointed. Hmm. Um, how did you get into knitting? I got into knitting about how long ago now? Um, when I was in my teens and I remember I think I just found like I was so I didn't have a lot of friends when I was growing up and I never went out with friends on the weekends or anything. I actually didn't know that was a thing. I just thought everyone stayed at home and hung out at home. So I, I spent a lot of time alone in my room all snooping around my like parent stuff and snooping around the house and I found a pair of knitting needles um, in my mum's stuff and she's like a seamstress and stuff so um, yeah I found this pair of knitting needles I'm like oh yeah I'll knit and I remember I bought some blue yarn blue acrylic yarn and I told like a friend about it and she's like yeah I knit and I'll teach you and this was before YouTube this was before anything you had to learn from books and I remember knitting a um, I knit nothing. I, I was just practicing and I remember thinking, I remember so clearly thinking when I was knitting, I'm like, okay, because I was trying to get the knit stitch look, obviously, like stockinette stitch. I remember holding it and I'm, I was doing it and I turned my work and I kept knitting. So I was essentially knitting garter stitch and I just remember thinking like, surely I don't have to like move my working yarn around. It just happens, doesn't it? Um, yeah, and then I'm like, oh no wait, it doesn't, you, you do have to move your yarn around and then that's just how I learned and yeah, and I kept knitting on and off for a very long time um, and I do a lot of other crafts, like I love cross stitch sewing I cannot do, I just don't think I have the patience for it I, it's one of those things I think if you are not patient and you mess up the cutting of it or something then you can't you can't do it but um knitting you can fix your stuff and you're going stitch by stitch which I think is really cool like yeah to go stitch by stitch on something is like yeah and then the question after that is what's the first knit you ever made the first knit I ever made was probably like a terrible scarf or something a beanie I made a lot of beanies and hats so I started off with accessories and hats and beanies um, I think the first sort of jumper I ever made was on Chunky Yarn and it was one of the good night day knits and I think it's such a great way to start knitting sweaters because you start to see how it comes together and how it's constructed together and I think that's sort of what sort of drew my interest into that sort of stuff but yeah the first knits I ever made were hats mostly. Okay what is the best and worst part of knitting? Uh, okay the best part of knitting is I think the finished product and getting a knit done especially when you're working on like tiny 3.25 millimeter needles and you're working on a sleeve and I've just started this sleeve here this is gonna be this is gonna take me a while um yeah I think it's the finished product and sort of like the satisfaction of knowing that yep I made this the worst part um sometimes it's like when things don't really work out how you want and then you have to unravel it but then it's like well you've got this yarn you can use for something else the worst part for me lately has been the the, the pain like the neck and back pain and arm pain because it's slowing me down and i just need a i just want to get all my designs out and all my stuff done it's it's a waste of my time i don't have time for that but anyway i think those are the best and worst parts of knitting um how did you learn to design the same as like learning to knit or starting my business is I just did it I jumped in and I did it again I knit that chunky sweater for the first time and I, I just got interested in it I got interested in how it's constructed and how you can you know use increases and decreases to shape a sweater I think a part of it was that it was just sort of the fascination of it and how it worked and the next part of it was having that um, that want to make things that I saw so I've always been that person that if I saw something I'm like oh I, I want to try and make it and that includes clothing which is why I tried sewing for a while I just really wanted to try different things 
and try and make it myself. And so I really pushed myself to figure out how to do that stuff. And I think that really helped in me wanting to make my own designs. I think it's it was the naivety as well of not understanding fully the whole concept of different types of knitting. And I had to do a huge crash course in how to design. And doing that, I used YouTube. It's such a great resource to learn stitches. Um, I read a blog um, by Sister Mountain. It is such an amazing blog. Um, there are a lot of blogs out there that you should read and I will link the blogs below in the description for you so you know that what I read and then you can sort of from there learn to like, um, I guess, start designing as well because um, they were so valuable and I use a lot of stuff in those blogs as well. It was just jumping in and being kind of naive and ignorant and um, being okay with making mistakes because for me, I was like, okay, if I make a mistake, I can just fix it, it's fine. No one's here to judge me, no one's, I'm doing it on my own time and no one's here to really be like, haha, you suck or something, you know, other than all the other personalities I have, but yeah. There is not one design that I've done that I have not frogged. Even if it's one line or an entire thing, I'm constantly frogging because in my head, you, you can have an idea in your head or have, of how something will work. And I would like to think by now, I'm like, okay, I've got it in my head. But then once you get into it, the logistics of it start becoming apparent and you're like, okay, wait a minute, I didn't think of this, this and this. And then so you got to like unravel, do it again and it's just but it's because like I'm so focused on getting what I want and then in the end you have if you do all the hard work now in the end you have the pattern that you want and it'll work for everyone so yeah I think it's doing yeah a couple of weeks of the hard work and then just just doing it just do it tick as Nike say yeah and it's just fun to be honest I love like at night I'm scrolling and I'm looking at new stitches and I'm saving these stitches I'm like this will look great on a top or this will look great on a dress or this will look great here and I just like really like learning it and I think that's part of it is like having that passion for it um, no matter how geeky or weird it sounds it's like being like excited to try something new I think it's like with anything if you're not passionate about it you won't like it and you won't it won't stick to you as much that's how I feel about like acting roles is when I get lines that I can memorize easily I'm like this is a character for me I know where this character lives I know where um what what their motivations are I know what they want um if I struggle to learn lines I'm like okay this character is so far removed from me that I have to do so much more work to get there it will be worth it in the end but it's just the work you put in really do you think Designing can be sustainable as the primary only income source, not just for you, but for the average designer in general. Been wondering this for a while. It it really depends. I, I think it can be, but I also think that having more than one source of income is much more sustainable. Like, I think there are some designers that are absolutely killing it out there with their designs. And at the same time, I do think like, within the construct of today's day and age you do need more than one source of income because nothing is set in stone you don't know what can happen to any industry to anything ever things can collapse i mean look at twitter like even jobs aren't, aren't that sustainable you can lose your job you know it, nothing is set in stone so in terms of like designing and stuff it's you know there are people in every industry that thrive off of just like doing their one thing because they've found their market. So good question, tough question. Very like thought inducing. That's not that's not the correct words, but anyway. Okay, oh, I got a few questions here in a row about my acting. So can you tell us a little about your acting? How did you start acting? What's your dream acting role? So my acting, um, I think I've just always wanted to be an actor and I never told anyone. I think when I was around 13, I went and I saw, this is controversial to say now, I saw Harry Potter um, and the Chamber of Secrets. And I remember seeing that movie at the time when I was 13 and being like, yeah, I think I want to do this. This is fun. Where else will you ever get to be like a wizard and to pretend like you're a wizard and everyone congratulates you for it and they don't think you're crazy. I think that was my mindset was um, to do that 
So that was sort of like my first sort of like aha moment of, okay, I want to be an actor. Um, but I never told anyone. I like, I'm Asian. I should have liked maths and all those stereotypical stuff. So I never told anyone. But on top of that, the teacher I had was very, she, she didn't like me for some reason. And so she made me feel like I wasn't good enough and that I couldn't do it. And honestly, I didn't even pursue it until a lot later in life. I sort of did it on my own in a way. I would just be by myself and I would just copy movies. I would copy quotes from movies. That's probably why I know so many movies. It was just a lot of mimicry and just being like, oh, I want to be this person and realizing that I wanted to be like the people I saw on screen. And I remember watching a movie where I think Julia Roberts played like a photographer. I'm like, oh, I want to be a photographer. And then I saw um, another movie where someone was like a librarian. I'm like, oh, I want to be a librarian. And I realized that I didn't want to be a photographer or a librarian. I wanted to be a TV or movie photographer or a TV librarian. And I'm like, wait a minute, that means I want to be an actor. And um, I got really scared. I think I was really scared of what people thought of me, of what um, people would think of me. So I didn't really pursue it. And then I think I just ended up taking a class and saying to someone, oh, I want to take acne. And they're like, cool. No one cared. No one blinked an eye. No one said anything. And I just took a class one day and I had a really lovely teacher who supported me and who, in a really lovely school that I should probably go back to actually and take a class to refresh myself. But they were just so lovely to me and they made me feel like I could do it, that I could be an actor. And so now I've just been sort of pursuing it since then. Um, my dream role would be anything like a lead in a TV show or I'm really fascinated by the careers of Emma Stone and Margot Robbie those actors I think they have like amazing careers but I also love like Teresa Palmer and Phoebe Tonkin as well like they worked on some CW shows which I, I love I would love love to work on White Lotus because I think that's my kind of show it's a bit dark it's a bit humorous first season with the australian actor he was hilarious like i love that sort of thing so that's sort of what i'd want to do that or like umbrella academy academy where it's a bit quirky it's a bit odd you know that sort of style of um acting yeah um any tips for writing size grading patterns. I don't, I have a design, but I don't know where to start. I, I think I mentioned it before. Um, lots of blogs. Um, there's a grading Excel sheet that I use. I use it for every single one of my grades, but you basically, you work it in your size. And then from there, you should be able to sort of figure out and grade other people's sizes. But then that's what testing is for. You figure out things in testing and then you can rewrite. It's just having an understanding of just the different sizes and then from there you can yeah make some make some patterns just off an excel spreadsheet which i've been doing and i'm like i'm weirded out by it. i'm like how can i how is this working for every size it's crazy and also just do it and fail it doesn't matter if it doesn't work out like you you figure it out and if not then you've got like a nice top for yourself that you made for yourself that you know how to grade in size so as i was editing this i realized another good way to sort of learn designing is to read a lot of patterns like knit a lot and read a lot of patterns. I've read through a lot of patterns and even if you just do something like reverse engineer a pattern or adjust it in a slight way, like let's say it's a pattern you like, but the sizing isn't really your size or something has too much positive ease or too much negative ease, you can learn to adjust the sizes and you can get an idea of what they were going for from their numbers. So from their numbers, you just take whatever numbers it is that you know, um, depending if it's top down or bottom up, just take whatever the total number is, um, divide that by the gauge, and then set up, you can sort of get an idea of what a pattern is going for. And then from that, you can adjust it and you can get an idea of like the mind of a designer and what they were going for. So that's a really um, handy thing to do as well, I think. What yarns do you use for summer spring knits? So at the moment for the summer knits that I have in mind, um what do i use i've used merino wool so this is like a tank this is my lost tank that i'm actually wearing now in black um i don't know how much fur you can see but there is fur on it so this is merino wool i think merino wool is really good 
for summer. I, I find it comfortable and this is right up against my skin and it's quite nice. Um, at the moment I've actually got some new summer designs, even though it's going to winter now, some new summer designs I'm making and they are made with bamboo which has like a lovely drape and so uh, I'm really excited about that and to see how that goes. Um, and cotton as well. I don't mind using cotton. I think they're good. Yeah. <sighs> Favorite yarn. Any four ply merino. This is Hobby's four ply merino. And what I'm wearing is Hobby's four ply merino uh, unicorn solid. But I love hand dyed yarn as well. In fingering weight. I've been in a fingering weight sort of place lately. So um, I also really love like fingering suri yarn. Um, I, I do like lace weight suri yarn as well. I have an idea for a pattern for that, but most like yo 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 hair. I was gonna say yo hair, suri yarn in fingering weight or lace weight. Either one doesn't really matter. I enjoy those. Honestly, if you follow my Instagram, you'll be able to find. I'll just like sometimes post about yarns I've gotten. I love Ch King Fiber, Ching Fiber. They are incredible. Just that shipping to here is terrible. Um, and I would love to try more like knitting for Olive, but again, the shipping is just out of this world and I really have to think about that a bit longer. Uh, upcoming projects you want to make? So many. I have a list of upcoming projects I want to make. I just haven't had time for them. Some are from uh, what Lydia made. I recently found her stuff on Ravelry and the colors are amazing. Um, a lot of like four ply designs I want to make. Gosh, I just, my mind's been so focused on my own designs that I haven't even thought too much about it. How did you learn different knitting techniques and then construct the patterns? Uh, you just sort of go in and learn it. So you sort of, knitting patterns have a formula and they have a, a pattern and you just sort of, um, learn those patterns and then apply it to a design. So for example, right now this two by two, I'm knitting a two by two um, pattern on here. And so with this pattern, I know that the stitch count is like four stitches because you got two knit, two purl, and that's your count. And then so from that, I knew I had to construct something that um, you have to sort of choose like, okay, this is the ease I'm going to go with. And then I have to do increases, but I have to do a certain amount of increases in order to maintain a pattern as well. And it's thinking of all those things before you even cast on and trying to grade it. And then as you get into it, then you make adjustments and all that. Um, so yeah, like right now I'm thinking of a new pattern that has like these squares and it's going to use garter stitch and it's going to be constructed a certain way. There's a plane coming in, so I'm going to get closer. Um, yeah, it's going to be constructed a certain way. So I, I'm already thinking about like the ease it'll have. I'll be like, okay, if it has positive ease, um, then I can be a bit more lenient with like if I increase or decrease. But also I wanted to have like a neckline. So I have to think about how I can increase and decrease on a neckline and maintain pattern. Um, it's all about trial and error. And that's why... They suggest you do a gauge swatch on these things. Um, I don't. I go for the big thing. My gauge swatch is my sample. Um, I will do like a little gauge swatch to be like, okay, this is my um, the stitch count. But then when I get to the big thing, it's like completely different. Like my last thing I did, it was like this, the swatch and then the actual thing was so different, but my swatch was like that big. So the different knitting techniques you can find anywhere online, just books. Not books, not so much books. Some books you can, just online blogs, Pinterest, YouTube is probably the best one. If you go down a hole of YouTube, you'll eventually find patterns that are like, oh my God, that's like really cool. Are you working on any acting jobs at the moment? No, not yet. I am manifesting though to work on acting jobs. Um, I did just update my showreel as well. And I just got an audition for something. So that's really cool. But thank you for asking. Now here, were there any knitting techniques projects that scared you until you tried them? Um, I never wanted to like block my stuff because I'm like, this is weird. You're dunking your yarn into like a whole lot of water and, but blocking is like amazing. Um, and it'll make things like this where my stitches are a bit dodgy. 
look really great at the end. Nothing else has been super scary. I think there's a technique of like steaking where you cut your yarn, like you have to work your stitches a certain way and then you cut your yarn and I cannot wrap my head around that. I've seen it, I haven't tried it, but that looks scary and I don't, I don't know if I will try it ever. But never say never, I usually say that now. Um, felting was another one that I was like, what is going on? But I had no idea, I tried to felt acrylic once. I had no idea about wool and felting and all that. I was like, oh, I'll just buy this acrylic yarn and I'll felt that and it didn't felt and I'm like, what is going on? I think I was trying to make this like cute little hat that's like a bear or an owl or something. I don't know. And yeah, that didn't work. But felt felting is fun, I think, if you do it right. But I just, I think I, I realize now that I messed up on the type of yarn it was. That is literally all the questions that I have. That was awesome. That was really good. I spent a lot of time just sitting here talking and not knitting that much. I didn't knit, I knit like two rows, so. But, um... Yeah, I hope you learned a little bit more about me and I hope it was interesting. And yeah, please let me know in the comments below about any of your your own like thoughts about anything I said. So cool, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!